but I wanted to show that because this is a very interesting book called Scientific. You will see that it was written there, the Sarasam and Salman Mandir, but they came on the page, came to page 10. Problem that bondy flow actually, um, Sir Bondi gave it to the class students as a homework. When and out of the students, uh, J.B. Narlikar was sitting as a student, PhD student. And so Bondi wrote a very, very beautiful forward on my book in my book, saying that when he gave this homework, he never realized that the subject will become so rich and it will uh, do so much, you know, contribution to the subject. So that was a interesting forward, but I did, I did not you know, devour it today. So, and if you have interest, you can read it from the book and in the library. Okay. So, so far I have been t telling you about the solutions, which are really the generalization of bondage solution. In presence of rotation, in presence of viscosity and relative transfer. So, not really, it is not something very highly sophisticated, quantum mechanics or magneto hydrodynamics or something. It's a very simple hydrodynamic extension, okay? And we will come, to, come from there and we have already discussed that when we start observing the, you know, matching with the observation, then we'll realize whether the solution is good or bad and what else we are lacking. One of the things I want to point out that the method that I have presented to you, the solutions, are have been verified by everybody. This is a paper by um, uh, you know, which are Novikov, where they directly say that they will use the, you know, to avoid the difficulty of overtake, these collaborators used a very tricky method, into, introduced a very clever method, and, you know, so they, because they were not being able to, they, they are not being able to, that is why they did same similar, remember? So this is a, anyway, this is done now, oh, almost. Is it that? More or less. Really? By the way, I don't have the mic or I don't re require mic anymore? My mic are there. Uh, this one, this one is working. Yeah, we, we can hear you. I think you're, we can, yeah. We've walked in with the sound of your voice. I think the mic is not good. I can try, but if you say There's a problem that uh, you need to take the rest for, for some seconds. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe too hard inside. So, you know, the, the problem was the problem I uh, wanted to solve by theory of transonic flows and the transonicity. So, that was not solved and people did it self similarly. Ultimately, people realized that if they follow my procedure, they can also solve ADA. Okay. So, this is uh, Abramovich and Novikov and all these people had used my clever technique. They used, they, they describe my technique and they say that they, uh, they are, they will, they are following, you know, in order to see how this is like that. Then he said that we follow the, 
this human survivor. Uh, yeah, so we adopt a procedure very similar to Chakravartian, specifically we take the position of uh, this like that. So this is the procedure they have, if they use my procedure, they get the right solution for it. Mm. Mm. Uh, were, you, were you the referee for this paper? No, no. <laughs> In fact, I never expected them to use my solution. So it was a surprise to me, I saw it maybe after a couple of years of publication. When I saw the references, I saw quite oh, Abraham is cited my paper. What is this? Then I found that they have entire paper they actually did adapt, but use my method. Okay. Then uh, there is another paper, the Chinese are no exceptions, as you know, Lu Jufu and even uh, Fong Wang. Oh, they also start you see adapt how many times adapt is written. So they also did the adapt and very recently adopting a procedure similar to Chakravarti. So they started again using the my method. And they, um, uh, in the present paper, we solved the dynamical thing, method similar to Jock Road. So ultimately, when they use my method, they get the solution. That is not a problem, but, uh, and then they said that because I have done all the solutions, carpet bombing method, I have actually swept out all the solutions. They really have not much to do, only to point out that some of the solutions could be redundant. So that is, the, they say that some solutions could be there, but could be redundant. Why? Because they still have the thinking that when I am solving the problem, it may not touch, touch the Keplerian disk at infinity. So, just like 1980s, Pachinsky and they were thinking that the thick accretion disk must pass to the inner sonic point. They should start with the thick accretion disk, pass to the inner sonic point. These people are still thinking that everybody must start from a Keplerian disk and then they must pass to the inner sonic point. Uh, and uh, so that is where the criticism starts. So, there is one line criticism in both the papers saying that some of the solutions may not touch Keplerian things. But I could have care less because I do not start with the Keplerian things. Anyway, so very quickly compound scattering they started um, very nicely pointed out uh, by Konichi uh, because I, before I spectrum, by, uh, I, uh, I um, explain the spectrum, I like to show you that if I have a cloud and if there is an injected spectrum like a, like a mononetic photon you are putting in, then it can, the photon can either, there is a probability that it will scatter with an electron or there is a probability to escape from the system. Okay. So there is a certain probability P that it will scatter and then uh, it, it will be, it will, when it escapes, you will watch it by, by a satellite. There is a probability that after single scattering, it will, it will go to do a double scattering and then, then it will escape or it will do a double, triple scattering, then it will escape, etc. So there will be, number of scattering, but the probability will go down and down and down. Because, because uh, the, for every probability the temperature of the electron is going down, but as a whole the cloud temperature is not going down drastically, you assume that the probability and the escape probability, etc. are independent of the scale. That is the beautiful, beautiful that is the assumption of a compound scattering process. In other words, the, if this is the first scattering, the second scattering will be a particular fraction of it, and we energy will go down, go up by 4 kT by nc square, 4 T is the temperature of the electron. Some more scattering, third scattering fellows will go, but the number will go down. And because it's a same similar process, this it will be a straight line. So why the, so straight lines are very important in a same similar um, processes that you every time you scatter, you exactly same amount of energy you transport, uh, 4 kT by nc square, and when this assumption breaks down, then only you have the start off and it is no longer a straight line. Okay. So that is in every astrophysical situation, so wherever you see power law of the straight line, you know that the assumption underlying is a shape similar. Sometimes it is true, like in turbulence or the distribution of meteorites in the in the asteroid belt or distribution of asteroids in the asteroid belt. These are all power law cases. So small scale to large scale breaking into pieces, it requires a separate lecture. I am not going to this. But the fact remains that the probability Probability of case scattering, you know, see that intensity after case scattering is p to the power k. In other words, every scattering has the probability p, same p, and therefore it is self similar. Okay? And then uh, in order to, the, the photons, every time you hit, the energy goes up by factor of eta. So after case scattering, your energy goes up by 1 plus eta to the power k, and you eliminate k, and you get an alpha, which is the power law index of the straight line. Okay, so that is the simplest way to understand why quantum scattering produces a power law. 
and uh, of course after a few scattering, it, uh, it, the, escape, the uh, electrons energy is draining out, so it will not be able to transfer the same amount of energy for KT by any system. So recoil effect will be important. Okay, I really don't have much time to uh, tell him every uh, topic. But to so the end of the day, this is what we believe is happening to it, but this is not, already we will not have this picture, but this is the most general thing. And so when you solve the generalized bond flow, you find that part of it will become a kepler energy, so there is a high viscosity. Part of it will be low viscosity region, will be more advective. It will advect entropy, energy, etc. And then centrifugal force will take over. It may or may not form a standing shock, depending on the nitrogen condition. It may even form an oscillating shock. And then it passes to the inner sonic point and enters into black hole. And, and if you can keep this region hot, then it will also supply matter to the jet. Now, so this is a general picture. We will try to see if the um, uh, observations, uh, you know, uh, agree with this. I will also talk about the outflow and my MHD, etc. And we discussed that if you can cool down this post of region, then it is a soft state. If you cannot cool it down, it is a hard state. And so the spectrum will change depending on your accretion rate. This is, for instance, one paper I wrote long time ago, 2006, with you know, Cygnus X1 in the soft state. Signals X1 in the hard state using this uh, solution. Okay, so uh, and it goes up to very large energy as you can see, as John was pointing out that sometimes energy could be very high, few MeVs, even Bathsy data and lab data they are pointing out that very large, but they are even integrated for about a day to be able to see a few photons. Um, but in any case, we produce that only when we add the the, the acceleration of electrons due to the shock. So because shock accelerates some of the electrons produces a power law, a electron, electron number distribution which, is not, which are not Maxwell Boltzmann distribution and then if you compromise them. So compromisation um, by Maxwell Boltzmann will produce this power law but if compromisation of uh, electrons which are not Maxwell Boltzmann, non-thermal, we can take the power law very, to very far distance. Okay. So this is for example our feed another later paper, Somir Mondo, he is a professor now in IIST Trivandrum from ISO Institute. This is, we have written, you can see that this, this is a MIT 7 disk and it does not require a Keplerian disk at all. There's a whole thing that means as though the matter is um, totally sub Keplerian and very little seed matter. So before we, uh, I want to just tell you that what was the subject before. Before that, of course you must be wondering that what was the subject before. Subject before was that the people require a compound cloud and they were putting it everywhere. They want. They they know that there is a compound cloud and they don't know where to put it. And then you keep it somewhere here, another set of people kept it and they're here. Some people say if you block the whole thing, then they how do I see this up? Then they keep some holes like Swiss cheese, different kind of models, and you can also see some kind of corona models, starting from Malik Bhaina Rosner and other things. People are talking about it. But we, as I discussed a long time ago yesterday, that they're bringing uh, some of the, these things are, we do not agree with such pictures because then each of them has a problem. Because if you keep it like that, you have to keep on supplying these clouds from somewhere because they will get cooled down very quickly due to, due to compost current. And sometimes you see state transition within even 10, 15, 20 seconds, it goes from very hard to very soft. So bringing them, leaving them out, once you have a can of worms and you keep them, leave them out, very difficult to bring them back again. So bringing or keeping corona which can form and you know and uh, and subside within a few seconds is difficult. As, uh, you know, the, uh, thermodynamically also entropy will go down probably. So because of that, we will not. This part I already discussed. There is no such evidence that such corona can form in accretion disks because accretion disk does not have the uh, ready, ready the core and convective envelope. So you have to. This is like a fantasy, you each core corona must have some kind of anchor underneath. Okay. So as I said yesterday, this is an important statement that every time you see a corona, you know that there is a much bigger thing going on inside. You see a corona on the sun, that is not the story. That is only a very fraction of the story. Field is inside. Okay. It may be come out of like a parker instability, so we will go and see, but then actually field is stuck in, the, in between the uh, convective uh, envelope and the core. So we, a, disk, a disk which is moving with almost velocity of light close to the black hole, we can hardly imagine 
that this kind of structure will be there. So I am not, uh, I mean there could be transient states, transient magnetic fields, there could be plasma instabilities, but not sitting like this corona beautiful things. So and there are many other models, people who are, this is basically people who are trying to understand this arch. Okay. So they know that some, this is called phenomenology. You try to, you see that power law, you try to see where I should put it and to be able to explain the data. So it is not necessary they follow hydrodynamic equations or microdynamic, but at least they can fit the data. This is also, for example, people talk about lamp post, which would think that I don't know where to put the lamp post. So this is the kind of thing we uh, usually say that, okay, these are, we don't worry about it. Sometimes people use this kind of model, which is also a little bit, if you do cell consistently, which is wrong, because it's that if you pop up the disk, then you can always cool it down. If the same disk is popped up, then the electro opacity and the optical uh, and the temperature is such that the same soft photon will always be able to cool it down. So you require an extra source of electron whom you cannot cool down and you get a hard state. So that is why people draw it, it may be a little bit diluted version of what they know, but sometimes it is risky. What, uh, what do you think about the X-ray emission from the base of the jet? I mean, the lamp post is just kind of an approximation to that. No, no, I come to the base of the jet. I show that the jet actually comes from the base and the, jet, the, 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 the X-rays are coming from the base of the jet and uh, the jet is nothing but the extension of this same ball itself. Okay. So well, the same if, ball. If, if that's your position, then that's a pretty strong statement that you have on your slide. The, the, this uh, which one? The lamp no, post. No, no, the one to the left there. Yeah. That's a pretty strong no, statement. That's a pretty strong statement. If, if really you think that X-rays have come from the jet, then that's a pretty strong statement to make. No, no, but the, the, the X-rays are coming from the base of the jet. Yeah. But why does it have? But lamp post is not used only for the jet. Lamp post is also used to sign onto the disk. Okay, but all I'm saying is signing onto the disk, you don't require a lamp post. Same ball is doing that, and also the base of the jet is doing that, and base of the jet is coming from the same ball itself. Let me just show it, then you come back. Okay, this is an I I tell you where it came from. I talked to Roy Abrahamson. He said, okay, magnetic fields are uh, you know entangled, and maybe there is some entanglement going on, and and around the axis, this entanglement is radiating some energy, and it behaves like a lamp post. So that was his idea of lamp post. Uh, I would have felt that somebody is holding something. But he said, no, magnetic fields is entangling because it is, and then uh, they reconnect and they produce some energy. So this reconnection business, you have to go on doing it for a continuously. And then you be, then if that is the case, then your entire X-ray should come out from the lamp post, except for the reflection component, which is not correct. And so what I'm trying to say is that the actual main X-ray from the disk is coming from the centrifugal barrier something like that here, and then on the top of that, the base of the jet is also hot because it is coming out and expanding. So base of the jet will also produce extra because it's an extension of the centrifugal barrier. So uh, it is not because of lamp post, but because of the fact that the base of the jet itself, base of the jet itself is a, it is not like a boundary. So base of the jet itself is a part of the same world. So this is also a component cloud. Base of the jet is also a component cloud. You can either do thermal componentization or you can have a important, you have a magnetic field, you can produce extra from by symbolic process. But I, all I'm saying is the jet is not, is, is uh, base is only a few hundred, few tens of Schwarzschild radius. If you cool this down, base does not form. Uh, uh, the base is not there, so jet does not form, and so on. I mean, so lamp post would be the other thing. Lamp post would be like if you remove this end all altogether and put the source somewhere here symmetrically placed here and there, then you see that there are three more extra parameters you require. You the optical depth, temperature, and the distance you put it, solid, state, uh, solid angle it makes onto the thing. It may help you to produce reflection components and other things, but that I will show you that we don't require the put reflection component because it is already in the problem. So let us concentrate on this and we will come, of course, the rest of my today we have two and a half hours to discuss. So this is a so we do not believe that this is the only source of X-ray and then which is uh, or, or, uh, which is shining onto it to get reflection. We believe the main source is somewhere here and base will also produce a X-ray. Uh, base will also can also produce because it is just an extension of the same one. That is why the matter is getting supplied. Now now the question comes about the, this spectrum and then, they, then there are also timing. Some of the, the timing properties is not just too pure. People talk about positive oscillations that what we see is that apparently noisy looking X-ray light curve, if you do a Fourier transform, 
you find that there is a beautiful, beautiful, uh, you know, peak, and people say that something in that system must be oscillating. Now, the uh, because you have higher power, you can also see the slopes are different. So this represents the signs uh, completely different between the. So there is a like this. This is a time scale that corresponds to a length scale. So that length scale, length larger than this. We, is actually the Keplerian disk, length smaller than this in our picture is the sub Keplerian uh, post of region. So that this is there should be cut off at a sufficiently high energy because that will correspond to the origin of the black hole. But we never go up to that frequency um, uh, because the sampling, because the number of photons are very few. So uh, here at a, at a, you know, if you sample very fast. So this is a typical example of QPO that we should also explain. So not only we explain the spectrum, you should also explain the QPOs. And one of the papers I wrote a long time ago, which is uh, trust, believed to be the correct, to be correct by everybody, and if, if many other people also say it by many different ways, that one of the good things that happen in QPO, that you take this peak that I just now showed you, if I take only the soft photons the, and take the Fourier transform, there is no peak. If you take the hard photons, higher energy photons, which are compromised photons, then only the peak shows up. What it means is that, that whatever is oscillating is not a part of the, is not emitting soft X-rays, okay? So soft X-ray component is not doing the QPO. Now what is soft, what is hard, you have to be very careful. Because soft and hard depends on the mass of the black hole. If the black hole is supermassive, then even, a, even ultraviolet, is, ultraviolet is a soft X-ray, soft, soft equivalent, and maybe an extremely soft X-ray, 0.1, even 1 keV will be a hard X-ray, because it is compromised ultraviolet. So the, this, that is one of the things people do mistake and people, when the people draw the Q, Q diagrams and so on. That is one of the reasons why Q diagrams don't look like Q for the same object or from object to object. Because they stick to the hardness ratio constant number. These numbers are really dynamic, this should be dynamical range. Dynamic, depending on the mass of the black hole. But it is universally understood that for Celano, the black hole is soft X-ray is somewhere here, zero to, within zero to four. You see that there is no Q pair. In other words, Soft X-ray component is not participating in QPO. Okay, that only means in our picture that the Keplerian disk is not participating. If it is involved, the post-shock region is oscillating because post-shock region is emitting hard X-ray. So we must have an oscillating post-shock post region, which the component which is compromising at the same time changing its volume. And if it changes the volume, if it changes the volume, as you know. Then the size of the symbol, okay, becomes big or small. It is oscillating, and therefore the number of soft photons is getting intercepted. Is getting smaller or bigger. So if it's small, it will intercept few photons. So if big, it will intercept large photons. So if it oscillates, then the output itself, hard X-ray, will also oscillate. Now, this. Why? Because complex scattering does not does not create photons. Only brainstorming you create photons. Complex scattering only re-energizes it, either by complex scattering or inverse complex scattering. So the number of photons you intercept, and the same number of photons are emitted back in the hard X-ray, uh, either by you after one scattering or two scattering or in number of scattering. So hard X-ray that you see actually came from here. They intercepted and re-emitted. So if you see there is an oscillation there. There must be oscillation by the intercepting object. Intercepting object of the component cloud itself must oscillate. Okay, so this is this directly tells you that my uh, this push of region must oscillate. Now this is not new. We already discussed long time ago. Um, I think um, one of the things I missed yesterday was that I had some part left over in fourth term. Right? That is one of the reasons why the Time is not coming here. Probably yesterday's talk, I had that time. So this 1990, in fact, in 1994, we already showed that if the cooling time scale is here. Yeah. to the observation, but let me talk to the complex gathering part in a time-dependent simulation, okay? 
just for a little bit of diversion, but I should have shown it yesterday, I didn't have time. So now you have a time dependent simulation, you are, you are supplying photons, and you like to see whether the shock remains at the same place, okay? You find that the spectrum is actually, the, the spectrum looks like this depending on your radiation rate, and uh, if you plot the spectrum as a function of time, okay, look at it, this is spectrum, this is a multicolor black body, and this is your this is your compron com compromised component. Look at this, which part is oscillating, okay? You see that in this part is not oscillating very much because Keplerian disk is not participating in the oscillation. It is only the same ball, the centrifugal post shock region, which is actually participating, okay? And they, they, therefore, if you take a Fourier transform of this region, you will get a cube. But if you take a Fourier transform of that low energy, you will not get a cube. So that this is direct simulation. It tells you that it is a compound, the compound cloud is oscillating. Okay? Now, this oscillation, not only it oscillates, sometimes it is randomly oscillating. If the accretion rate is completely different from that of that will bring a resonance. Sometimes the oscillation is extremely good, we call it a C-type cube. I will come to that. So the, if you go on changing the this is what I am doing, I am changing the accretion rate. This is a student, Sudhi Borai, who is now a postdoc at uh, in the University of Notre Dame. He did his simulation during his day. So, as you change the attrition rates, it sometimes came to very sharp resonance. What is the resonance between? Resonance is that, see, this is a post shock region. You are cooling by compound scattering. And at the same time, you are supplying matter. Uh, in, so, if you have been able, if you are supplying too slow, then, so that it cools down immediately, there is no oscillation, okay? But if you are, similarly, if you supply too much matter so that it, it cools in very, very, at a different rate, there will be no oscillation. But only when the cooling time scale matches with the infall time scale, roughly speaking, within 20, 30 percent, it will start oscillating. So, there is a fighting between these two. Let me, I can uh, demonstrate this for you. This is 1996 paper, which uh, wrote the first paper in the, to prove using brain shallow to prove that this oscillation of the shock is due to resonance oscillation. Resonance oscillation of radiative shock structure. Today the same picture is again, uh, you know, Mariano Mendes and many other people have started talking about we believe this is resonance. You don't have to believe. We started believing it 20 years ago. So these just have to understand. That. This understanding is very easy. One can do the um, understanding is very easy because you, there is a uh, it is written in that paper very nicely. If you sit down there, exactly why the oscillation takes place, okay? So the oscillation does not take place always. And then one good thing it happened, even Ron Lemillard, uh, McClintock, everybody said that this is the only way we see that the frequency of oscillation started going larger and larger if you increase the accretion rate of the things. Because that's, that's, that's the of in every outward sources. What happens if you, if you increase the accretion rate of the disk, it cools down the same ball a little bit, same ball shrinks. And as the size of the post of region shrinks, it oscillates faster and faster. And therefore, QPU frequency goes up. So, uh, with the accretion rate, QPU frequency should go up, and this is the only way. So, what happened is, we are not, we are solving spectral solution. We did not know that it will also solve the QPU. Let us put it this way. So, we are doing the spectral properties. It so happens that during those re phase, when there is an oscillation between the cooling time scale and infall time scale, which is the same as the compressional time scale, compressional heating time scale rather, there is oscillation. Okay? So this oscillation, if you do the Fourier transform, in fact there is an interesting paper I wrote once because people started understanding, people started asking the word please explain this oscillation in terms of compound this is 2015. We computed it exactly total number of electrons in this end ball. And we try to find out exactly what the cooling would be due to compound scattering. What is the total amount of thermal energy in the same wall? And if you if you cool that, that this is your portion of the shock condition. If you cool that, how long time it will take? How many milliseconds it may take? And then you say what is the infall time? And you know. And then you equate them, and you find out that uh, so this is the uh, we calculate them as far as as much analytically as possible so that people can understand it. Then we computed the end of the story is cooling time scale by infall time scale. And we find if this is within 50% for every object. People, you study the Devna, they don't at least 20 papers. 
for every object when this ratio is within 50 percent of each other, then only we see Q flow. If they are away from each other, Q flow is dead. It's not that. Okay. So this directly tells you Q flow is, is a oscillation of the same volume. So it is not a new. You don't have to bring lens in precision and or blocks or all kinds of oscillations to prove that the QPO is a different. The problem is that when people talk about QPO, they don't talk about spectrum. In our case, we talk about the spectrum, and the bonus we get the QPO frequency. So, Sunday, so for the, I was wondering for these uh, models, can you also make a good prediction for QPO frequency? Yeah. Yes, that's what we do. With the, I show you, maybe it is not okay, the, all these papers are there. The we, I tell you exactly how we do it, so that you can also do it. This is very transparent, very simple. We don't have anything which is carpet under the rug or anything. The, you are a, a, a theoretician, you will be able to appreciate. This is the location of the shock. You required for fitting spectrum. And you were, you did not know if it will form a QP or not. You did not do Fourier transform, right? So, this shock, what is the what is the infall time scale? Infall time scale is excess by phi sub s. This is the velocity at which it will fall from here to there. But phi sub s, generally what we put is 1 over square root of excess. That is the free fall. But when the matter has done a shock transition, it has the velocity gone down by a factor of compression ratio. Remember, the compression ratio gives to the, so velocity is not this, but it is 1 over r. R is the compression ratio, which also we get it from the feet. So we in, in the feet, we require four parameters. I will come to that. Accretion rate of the disc, accretion rate of the halo, rotation of the shock, and compression ratio. You give me these four numbers, I will feed the data. And I use that excess and R to calculate V, and I get the time scale, excess to the power minus 3 by 2, in two divided by, sorry, into R. OK? So this is the time. Infall time, you agree? So far I did not do anything tricky. Uh, Infall time is x by v, v has to be calculated correctly using the compression ratio of the shock, which you get from fifth. Okay? So this is your time, just do the inverse of that. This is your QPO frequency. That's it. We predict it and it is within 3%, 4%. There are many cases you see. All our papers have. So you this is precisely what is going on. There is nothing to And as I said, one day I was giving something there, day before yesterday, that the particle oscillation and radial oscillation has the same frequency as the rotational oscillation. Okay, that, that I remember. Mm -hmm. So even though the shocks are doing this, if you are very close to the black hole, then it will, it, it will no longer be same because it is in the full GR regime. Mm -hmm. You have to have the epicyclic and the vertical oscillation to the, the split. Remember that uh, John pointed out, there is a new knot, new one, new two, this peak, vertical and radial oscillation. Mm -hmm. This picking does not happen if the shock is far away. Namely, if it is a Newtonian region. Mm -hmm. As you come closer and closer, we split, and therefore high frequency QPOs will have, high frequency QPOs will have the split of 3 to 2, uh, the same phenomenon. But if you are very far away, the Newtonian, so all the, uh, even if they go vertical and radial, they are moving with the same frequency as the infall. All the frequencies are same. So, a little bit, I mean, this is roughly speaking, there is no trick there. Just calculate the infall time. This will, now, you may say, I know the infall time, does it mean QP will form? QP will form only if, okay, if you are hard working, if you can do any more work, that will be nice, then calculate the cooling time scale. Cooling time scale, I already told you, just read this paper, very simply written. How to get the cooling time scale? Just get the cooling time scale from this accretion rate. You add them up, divide by the volume, 4 third pi x cube, you get the number density of electron, and number de that electrons are now doing quantum scattering, and you have the total amount of thermal energy you already know, because this is the total number of electrons having temperature Te. So this temperature heat you have to dissipate by quantum scattering. So use the quantum cooling, average quantum cooling uh, you know, enhancement factor. Divide that, you get the cooling time step. It is written in this paper, very simply. So either, so now you say, is this time scale same as that? If they are within 50%, you say yes. I not only know the time scale, I also know the QQ. But if the cooling time scale is very, very large compared to this, 
or very very small compared to this, they will not put it. They are there, but they are not oscillating the shock. That you can see it. If I show, so maybe I have some transparency, some slide to show this. So Q2 frequency is inverse of the interval time. Just now I showed it. If from the shock location, and the Q2 evolution is into evolution of the shock. So when you see an outburst source or something, you see that Q2 frequency is going up. That is because shock was here, it was oscillating slowly, then it is moving in, and moving in and moving faster and faster and faster and faster, and faster before the flow actually goes behind the horizon. Mm -hmm. So, so and why the shock moves in? Because you are increasing the accretion rate. Accretion rate is pulling this post of the gel. And if you pull the post of the gel, thermal pressure goes down. So to, in order to have an angle on your shock, you must move in. Because once you pull the shock, the pressure goes down. So you must go to a place where the pressure is again higher. So it goes on entering, coming closer and closer to the black hole if you go on increasing the accretion rate. So as a result, the frequency, although it started with a few millihertz, started going faster and faster and faster, become 17, 20 hertz or something, suddenly it disappears. Okay, on the on one fine day in half an hour, you will have done. So this, I will show the result. So this is, the, this tells you the same thing, I will tell you most interesting thing. When you wrote the first paper in 2007 or 8, this, just to explain, Everybody said, how do you know that tomorrow's tupio is done by the same block as today's tupio? I said, boy, if the sun rises every day, do you question is the same sun, sun that set yesterday? How do you know it's the same sun? This is, it was as, <laughs> as grand as that. So if you see this tupio going up, they are even questioning that the reasons are completely different. If the reasons are different, how they line up like that? Okay. So this is the, the kind of thinking process which has come to the So anyway, this is how the line up. You can see, so questioning, questioning the fact that the cause of QPO on this day and this day are completely different is, I would not go that far. We are more sane than that. But the point is, why does it increasing like that? You can see, within a few days. Reason is the shock is coming up. And uh, shock is getting smaller and smaller. And after the outburst of the X-ray, the shock again goes back, recedes. And you can see the QQ frequency are going down like that. Okay? And this is our our solution, this dotted curve. So and the, this is a hard hard intermediate state. In the soft intermediate state, there will be sporadic QPO which are not from resonance. That is from the non that is non-satisfactory of the non-satisfaction of the antimonial condition. Okay. So these are all random, few one or two days it comes. Sporadic QPOs are very sporadic. Suddenly it comes after three, four days, maybe one more time to completely random place. But when you see these fellows, they're all coming from resonance. One, you are locked into resonance, you are locked into resonance for a few, for a long time. That I can prove also, I have proved also in that paper. So end of the day, this is what is happening in an outburst. When matter is uh, so you, uh, very far away, Kepler in this case very far, and ultimately it is coming closer and closer, and then it started oscillating faster and faster. I will of course show you the... Sandy, what do you have states? Hmm? Do you have states that correspond to those? This one, this one will be like hard. Yeah. This one will started getting into hard intermediate. Okay. Then it is soft intermediate. Then it is soft. Okay. Okay. So, but in the nowhere in the hard does the um, the optically thick disc reach the disc the, This is optical T, yeah. but this disc is very we put it very far out because the accretion rate in that disc is very the Kepler rate in this is very low. I will let me do it. In fact, the slides are a little bit messed up. But I will show you why a brilliant disk is actually sitting somewhere very far in a Poisson state. Yeah. Because Poisson state um, and viscosity is so low that matter is getting piled up very far away. Yeah. Until and unless viscosity, viscosity increases by convective, convective instability or something. And then this, this whole process starts. So this process starts after a long time of Poisson. And that, Matter that was supplied by the companion was, was piling up and piling up until and unless it breaks the threshold, uh, increases the viscosity, creates the Keplerian disk, and Keplerian disk takes about 10 20 days to come in, whereas the same ball, this uh, advective flow comes within one day. I'll prove that now from the data. So I have not yet even fitted any data. So um, that is one thing you uh, I am still going to do. One thing I, I also people talk about outflows and jets here. I will say only one transparency I'll spin right now for hydrodynamics. This is again a paper I wrote in uh, 1998. 
uh, one paper. It also another version 1999. This is this is the only paper you will see which is addressing the following question: that what is the ratio between the outflow rate and inflow rate? Okay. So given an inflow, what is the outflow rate, and what is the ratio of that? I am not talking about independent values. I am taking only the ratio. What is the importance of that? You will see as a function of what? As a function of the compression ratio of the shock. So we use completely different physical variables. Now you see this this card. More and more every day we see observation. We know that more and more this is the, this card is correct. Okay. What does it say? It says that if the compression ratio is one, namely there is no shock. You agree? Compression ratio one means you did not do anything. No density ratio is nothing. If there is no shock, there is no outflow. If there is very strong shock, compression ratio is seven. Outflow rate is there, but it is much very small. So very hard state, Poisson state, and other things places you need not be having highest possible addition rate. Okay. But if it is an intermediate region, intermediate shock strain, then you have the more probability to produce uh, produce the um, outflow, and that is what we observe. That is why we see burst on burst of states in the GRS or any of the, the Q diagram. Wherever you go, the formation of the jets, stronger jets, everything takes place when we have an intermediate shock, rather than the either either that part or this is the soft state. There is no shock in soft state. So it directly tells you, this is the only paper, has said that the soft states will not have a shock, not have a jet. This also tells you hard state will not have a jet, but it will be thin, optical thin, very low. Only intermediate region. So if I have an end dot, if I if I can put a reasonable end dot, that will also have the same similar thing, and you will, you will see that the highest possible. But the soft state has no jet, uh, hard state has jets, Parts twice and intermediate state, not twice, excuse me, it is a different case. The terminology is different, but uh, I did not write it. This is super important later. But so this is the this is the um, uh, region where the, it is not the rate that is high, but the probability uh, is the ratio that is high. So this is this is also interesting. It tells you that if I go on increasing the attrition of the disc, it is going to cool the base of the jet. Okay, the, just now John was asking who is emitting jet. Okay, is it the symbol or the base? I am saying both. But if you cool down the jet, cool down the base, then even the jet is turned off. So this is the numerical simulation again by the same individual. Right now in another uh, term, it tells you that as I increase the accretion rate of the disc, the jet is quenched. You can see that this is a strong jet, low accretion rate. As I increase the accretion rate of the disc, jet itself is quenched. Why? Because you are pulling the same ball, and if the same ball is pulled, then the, even the jet's uh, driving power is is, is is out. Okay, it doesn't have a drive, enough driving power to to raise it. So jet also is going. So this is quenching of the quenching of the jets when you increase the descent, which is also observed by uh, observed by uh, a uh, observation. So what I am trying to say is that the jet is same ball and jet is really there is a continuity. If the JSN ball collapses, jet also collapses. Okay? How do you differentiate them? Because there is a sonic surface and there is an outflow, and there is subsonic and there is some supersonic. So region, there is much more detail. In fact, we have been writing this for a long time, but it will, uh, this is too complicated. The jets have the problem that there is also a sonic surface here, and the flow is so this is same ball, and the matter comes out subsonically, and this is sonic mass number equal to one, as far as outflow concept. So here the density is high, you have to know whether its optical depth is larger than 1 or less than 1. If the optical depth is larger than 1, it will also cool down just like that. Okay? And, if the and in that case, if the photons, the photons are coming from the thin disk, it will cool down this region, it will also cool down the face of the jet. Okay? If you cool it down, sound still goes down, and the jet which is marginally subsonic will also become supersonic. Because some Subsonic or supersonic does not depend on V. It mostly depends on the sound speed. So if you cool it, cool it down, even the lower low velocity fellows suddenly find that at lower energy, lower sound speed region, if Mach number will become larger than one. So the, the blob will separate. It will be blobby jet. Okay. So when you have optical, optical depth larger than one, it will start producing blobby jet rather than a continuous jet. 
So these are the rich, these these are uh, produced from different part of the carp. Okay, it is a little bit complicated, but that carp contains a lot of science. Okay, I can only give you the reason why the carp looks like this. Uh, if the base is very large, okay, then the temperature is very low, post of region, because it is very far away from the black hole. So driving is less. Even if the area is large, the density is low. So mass accretion rate outflow rate goes down. If, the, if you are very close, so that it is soft state, area is very small, density may be large, again the mass outflow rate goes down. So there is an intermediate somewhere where the rate is high. So just roughly speaking, that is why this shape looks like that. Okay? Okay. So now I, I can go back to the observation. So look, what is a, <coughs> let us discuss the outburst sources, okay? Out one, I, uh, so what are the outbursts? Outbursts are the most exciting things that happen to us at least. Because if you are watching only AGNs, then the spectral state is not changing in thousands of years. If your life will be bored, you will not get a job anywhere because you have nothing to write every year. This, this slopes will never change for a long, long time because the time scale is thousands of years or 50 years, 100 years. But only in outburst sources, where you see the object was sitting in quiescent state, very suddenly, within a few days, the outflow, the intensity of X-ray goes up by hundreds or thousands of times, and then after a few days, something happens, and it goes down again to quiescent state after a few months, typically, to again quiescent state. And it stays there maybe for a few months, to few years, to even 30 years, doing nothing, okay? So what, these are exciting objects, and because it is coming, doing all these things and going back, every day spectral state, is, the spectral slope is changing, accretion rate must be changing, and uh, so Q -Q frequency must be changing, so things are changing and you like the things like cats, they don't like steady things, okay, only things if they move they jump. So this, um, these out, that's why outward sources are so exciting, because they change every day, every half an hour even. If you, are, if you follow their, if you do dynamical Fourier transform, you will see even in the one hour its QP frequency has changed. Okay? So you see the object entering closing, coming closer to the black hole. So this is the situation, one object, I, I don't worry about the name, sometimes I don't even know the names, but it all matters uh, what it is, it does. So these are the photon counts, okay, and this is in a little say 2 to 12 KV, you can see that suddenly going down, very strong, then it did something, going down, again it went up, not that high, then it went down and again to the quiet state, okay? So this is in 1990, this is all-sky monitor data, RXT. What you have to remember one thing, that when we wrote down the spectrum of the Tita 1995, RXT was not even launched. People make models after that, many things, but we are sticking to the solution which was done even before RXT was launched. This, this, are, this is another object, you can see the outburst. You can see the number of days. And typically, here is thousand, thousand days means about three years. Here, maybe six months or something, eight months, things like that. So this is a good thing, okay? This is large number of days, but if you now concentrate on what they do in each day, etc., that makes it exciting. This is another object, GRO. Okay, 2005, 2004, people make big deals about. How many vows that they make? People write papers, very nice papers. One of the things people talk about is this two diagram. They say that when this outburst happened, this year God draws this cube. How do does it draw it? This is a, it, it's, it apparently it starts, starts with a very hard state. Then during the remaining hard, this is hardness, spectral hardness. Remaining hard, its intensity started going up. This side is intensity. And then it's, it, the hardness started going down, so it started getting softer and softer. Lots of things happen. Lots of gates may be produced. People have lots of pictures, uh, different kinds of pictures. Then the remaining soft it started going down, and then it started going hard again, and it comes down. It looks like Q, and it also this area, uh, because it's non-zero, we call it a hysteresis effect. Namely, the route that it took, it does not take the same route to come back. So it took a different route to come back. That's a big deal. Now, and if you divide in the hard state, hard intermediate, soft intermediate, and soft, then you get hard, soft intermediate, hard intermediate, and hard. But uh, the, uh, the, but this looks good. Only the only cautionary remark I want to make is that the spectral hardness, the, suppose they plot 
6 to 10 by 2 to 6, the KV. This number is, it depends on the mass of the black hole. Whether it will represent a, uh, you know, let, let us say you are plotting in the x direction, and 6 to 10 KV by 2 to 6 KV, this is your hardness ratio as a function of intensity. This picture, this 6, 10, 2 are not God given numbers. And whether it will be called the heart or whether this will be at all called the soft photon, depending on the mass of the black. Okay. So because of that, from black hole to black hole, this picture doesn't look like that. Also for the same black hole, the, uh, on a different outburst, the picture doesn't look like that. So that is one of the cautionary remarks. We have a different way of plotting it, where it does not happen, but I will not go into that. So for example, this is another, another hardness ratio diagram. For the same object, it does not look like this. It has some extra and they will they will have some expansion problem. Now, and here is another reason why the Q diagram has, uh, I mean, hardness ratio itself. People should be very careful. It just the, you know you should not take it like hardness ratio is something very sophisticated thing. This is the quickest thing that the observers can do. So just they are very tired of making instrument observing, so they want to do a quick look. It's not that they are really doing serious science. But end of the day, if they make a big deal about it, then you will be worried about it. These two objects, GRS and GR, if you say GI, GR and GRS, they look exactly similar like that, but the same hardness ratio picture, HR1 by HR2, so put them completely different class. Okay. So because uh, because the, that's because the masses may be completely different. So th this this need not be a this may be this may be soft photon for one, this may be a few compound scattered photon for another object. So you have mixed up the number of the photons. These are genuinely quantum scattering, scattered photons. But this could be from Keplerian plus quantum scattering. So, so it is not necessary that you have separated the photons clearly and the masses uh, may get mixed up. Okay, I will not go this, but I will go into that. But the same thing, same picture, this is the Q diagram so called. It does not look like Q. But when you do it, our add up, uh, this, when this, our, including our add up, that, uh, what you love, Okay, this uh, transonic flow, you see that this is the, each branch has a completely different uh, So this is the A to B goes like this, something that here, hard state goes like this, B G hard intermediate state goes like this, and so hard inter this, this one is the hard intermediate in the declining phase and the hard state. So they separate. There is no mixing. Okay. So that is one of this here there is no soft state or soft intermediate. So this is this is not a complete obverse also. The viscosity did not go up. So now let us talk about the of, uh, uh, fitting of data on each day of the outburst. As I said, that the fitting of data, I take only four parameters. Okay, the accretion rate of the disk, accretion of the halo, compression of the shock, and the compression ratio of the shock. Now, if you don't know the mass of the black hole, I will give it for free also. That is the best part of this TICA model. Well, so we, if you Keep the in, um, mass free, it will also do it. A lot of people ask, how do you know the mass? Where does the mass come in? This is a SIRE question. People ask me in boss why. That suppose you see a power law power component, how do you know what mass is it? It could be from small black hole, it could be from high black hole. So, what our answer is that we don't see it as a power law. We see it as a collection of interaction between a large number of electrons and a large number of photons. And AP and the electron number density depends on the mass. Photon number density depends on the mass. So the spectrum that I ended up with has mass everywhere. Unless I choose a mass or I get the mass for best fit, and it, so it will not fit. So mass must come in our field. Okay, because we don't go by, we don't know whether it is a power law, black body, or reflection or not. So what we do is that we take the entire spectrum, we get it entire as a whole without dividing it into, without knowing which component is power law, which component is black body. The entire, the port gives out the whole spectrum. Okay? We don't divide whether this is a power law, black body, part of this and that, reflection. So, of course, there is an iron, if there is an iron line, we must put an, because there, there could be iron line. Iron we have not yet put. If we have put the iron abundance, then we have to put a board. One of my students, I gave the project, but he could not, he was not successful. Cloudy code is required to produce the iron line or aluminium, magnesium, put the awareness, you can do it. So that is another thing. 
So another interesting thing about TikTok is that you require normalization only once. In other models, you fit the multicolor black body, you fit this power law, and then you adjust the normalization in, in here, in here, the reflection also put an normalization or in you know, Gaussian normalization, every time cut off power law and normalization. So you have to, and not only that, you have to do it every day different normalization. We are saying no, normalization is talking between you and that object, and it is only one number. Your instrument is sitting here, object is sitting there, you already know the ratio of the number of photons coming from that object to this. Why should we change from day to day? So we calculate the spectrum sitting in that object, and you get the spectrum sitting, sitting on Earth by this instrument, so your instrument will require one scaling factor. To change the instrument, scaling factor will change, because it is your problem, you have changed the instrument. Okay? So normalization again, this is the, this is the uh, interesting part of it. So we do not know what it is, but the first data or first couple of data we calculate the normalization and, and we take the average, mean value. They are very close to each other. And use that for even the next outburst after 10 years or use the next, that same normalization after 20 years because the object has not changed unless if the object is PCC. Okay? So that time it was pointing like that. So obviously your factor was this. But then by the time you see the next, with the object is pointing in another way around, so reflection the, the, the you know, projected area has changed. So these are the things we say in the paper that normalization will change only if the precision is there or the um, or your measurement itself is uh, maybe we have some inaccurate one or two inaccurate or you may have a very strong jet whose base is also emitting X. So that is where that is uh, John was asking that suppose you have J, so you have this end ball and this J pickup only takes care of X-ray from here. What if this D can also emit X-ray? Then on those days where there are X-ray activity, you will also see a large sudden spike in the normalization. And we take the difference, we say, look, this extra spike is because of the X-ray coming from the jet. You should be observing, you should have an X-ray, you should have radio activity in radio wave on that day. And we check the data, radio is radio is active. So on those days when radio is strong, the base also produces X-ray, and that ends up with our this takes away, so the normalization suddenly starts. It goes by a factor of 10 or 7. You can see it is not like a small bulge. Okay. So this is why we say that uh, same, this base of the jet also contributes to X-ray. When the normalization is higher than what you require for the crypto. But once you have a normalization for hard state or intermediate, soft intermediate, etc., same normalization is valid for across the states. Across the spectrum from day to day. This is something again you don't have to worry. That is something people worry. That is why other models have a lot of parameters. But we don't need, uh, we don't have parameters because we don't have a scope to add that parameter. There is no place where you can fudge it in. Okay. And the other, the base part is, as I said, that uh, we can also compute the QPO frequency from the same parameters we you get from the spectral score. Sorry, uh, how do you get the, the, the size and the uh, This is the issue. Of how do I get? By fitting the data. So you, yeah, you fit the data. Suppose you, I uh, let me. So you have data. You fit it by our solution, okay? And this fit requires your how much matter is coming in the accretion disk? How much is so? We go to the flow, flow parameters. What are the flow parameters which are important? How much grams are falling in Gabriel? How much gram is falling in this subcaparian? What is the size of the centrifugal force barrier? And what is the shock strain? These four parameters you give, we will fit the data. We don't need any other parameter. So that automatically gives you the size of the compound. That is the size of the compound cloud. And you want to know the optical depth? That is no problem. Because you have the size. You already know how much matter is going in. M dot disk, M dot hello. And you already know the R, the compression ratio. The optical depth comes out. So, Sunya and Peter 1985, they required these two parameters, and all other models also required these two parameters for the quantum cloud. But we say oh, these are, this we don't need. These many parameters become redundant. We don't need them. Okay? We don't need them. That is why I need only four parameters. 
others will require minimum 10. Okay. This is a this is an example of fit. I, I will not show in the spectra because there are too many spectra. I have to show maybe one or two spectra only in the top. But after fitting, what are you, what do you see? Okay. Okay. This is the, this is really this is not the fit. This is the observation. This is QP frequency that I already showed. Yeah, this is for example one fit. So I can see that the parameters, the numbers are there. So here you can see that look at this paper. Okay, there's one outburst, 2010 outburst. Once you fit it, you see how the accretion rate is going up. This is the accretion rate of the disk. These are the fitted data. Okay, accretion rate of the disk is going up, and this is how the accretion rate of the halo going up. Okay, this is the accretion rate of the Hello. Hello means this adaptive component. One thing you should immediately see that the hello peaks are peaks before the disk by few days. What it means that the hello has reached the black hole much quicker than this viscous disk. Because viscosity takes a time, it has to transport angular momentum and then go. So this difference of few days, five, six days. So if I feed the data, I you to ask me how to compound cloud. So this is the compound cloud side. You can see the compound side of the compound cloud is going down. Why? Because this is getting softer and softer. And uh, as the accretion rate goes up, post shock region is getting cooler and cooler. I should talk about it. So this is uh, the same ball, the centrifugal barrier is getting smaller and smaller. This is exactly the centrifugal barrier is getting smaller and smaller. And then the soft state is same as the ESCO. Okay. It there is no shock. So all these are consistent. You can see the rim. So these are what we obtain by fitting. This is how the disk goes up. This is the halo rate goes up. This is the shock location goes down. This is the compression ratio goes down. Namely, shock becomes weaker and weaker. So everything is coming in the uh, in a consistent. The shock is getting weaker and weaker. Shock is getting smaller and smaller in size. Halo rate is going up. This is, and then after a few days, then there is a soft state, soft spectrum. Then it started, you can see that it started going back again to Poisson state. This is the rising phase, this is the declining phase. One thing you must notice, rising phase takes a few days, declining phase takes a long time. That is all, that is the reason for hysteresis, remember. So I come to the reason why it happens. Why is it that it produces Kepler and is very, very enthusiastically, but it does not <coughs> remove the Kepler and is enthusiastically. It is not enthusiastic to remove the Kepler in this. Why? Because it cannot remove it. Once you create that distribution, even if you remove the viscosity, it has no, it's stuck. It, it will rather rotate round and round than to disappear because they don't know how to fall. So only way they can do is they can interact with my with this hello, safe adjective, and they, they wash out. They slowly wash out themselves. I'll show this simulation. So this washing out time scale is much longer, factor of 10 longer compared to the creation time scale. That is one of the reasons why you don't see, this is one of the reasons why there is hysteresis. That you create faster, but destroy it slower. Okay? Interesting. This happens for every object. It's not just. So this is another case. Okay, this is 2011 outburst, another outburst of the same object. And we use the same normalization, remember? Normalization is not a big deal. Here you can see the reaction rate again started going up and accretion rate of the disk. Again that uh, the hello, accretion of the disk, this picks up much later compared to the hello, and shock location goes down, shock strength goes down, and Q2 frequency beautifully. And this is the these are the regions where which are non-resonant. This Q pews are sporadic. Only you can see that only two Q pews out of this uh, ten days or something, five, six days. So these are sporadic people. This is for the rising phase and this is for the declining phase. Same thing, declining phase also takes a long time. Always declining phase takes a long time because it has a hard time to remove the Keplerian disk. If the Keplerian disk forms, namely if the viscosity is high enough to produce the Keplerian disk. And so, so people say, give lots of names. Oh boy, it did not go to soft state. Oh boy, it did not go to soft intermediate. This is nothing. If your viscosity has reached above critical value, stay there for a long time, this will have a Keplerian disk, it will go to the inner end. But if you could not generate sufficient viscosity, it will go up to hard intermediate and then come back again. It is, you know, this doesn't have to, it is not like a, yeah, that they have, don't have, it's not like that salary depends on it. Okay? And if, the, if the viscosity is not high, 
they will not go on the new platform. They will go up to certain distance, viscosity is not enough supporting, it goes back in. Okay. So that is why same object sometimes can have to soft intermediate and soft state and they sometimes they may not even go to soft intermediate and soft. They can go from hard, hard intermediate and come back again, hard intermediate and hard. Because you did not support it, you did not give sufficient viscosity. Okay. So this is uh, one of the things I you were, you were discussing about the QPO. And here, for example, the same object you can see, same object. Okay. These are the these are the um, uh, rising rising these are the rising phase. These are the declining phase. And you can see the QPOs are observed. Okay. What you do? The, the QPOs are observed during the rising phase. Then there is no no, no QPO in the soft state because who is going to oscillate? Soft state there is no symbol, so nothing is oscillating. And then there is the QPO. So this is what you observe. Now what the theory says. Theory says, look, you have treated the data and you can always calculate the cooling time scale and infer time scale from theory. You pick the ratio. This is cooling, these are the theory. Take the ratio, cooling time scale, infer time scale. When the ratio is within 50% of each other, you see QPOs. I can also show you the QPO, 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 just in much of As soon as the ratio is larger than 2, or you, know, you can see the away from 1, there is no QPO. Okay. And again, the ratio goes, goes down. Again, the QPO occurs, and the QPO ultimately disappears here as the ratio started getting bigger. So, the ratio, whether you are pulling and the equal time, whether the ratio is of around 1, within 50% of each other, is important whether to see QPO or not. I show also the predicted thing. It is not dependent on the table is there. I could not bring everything. Okay. The, this is again the mass determination from every, every photon. This is an interesting method by which every spectrum you give, 10 minutes data you give me, I will immediately fit and give you a mass, which is not done by anybody else, any other solution, okay, or model rather. This is the only solution. So here you can see the mass, there is a fluctuation, fluctuation because it depends on the quality of data, depends on whether it was activity in radio. So this is a bonus, this, this comes as a feed, remember, and this mass needs not be very accurate. Why? I mean, it is never, it is at more, than, more accurate than other methods, but I would have expected far more accurate. So why it does not happen is because when it feeds the data, it feeds the, suppose you feed the multicolored black body by a, by a mass. And ma I showed you already that the multicolored black body basically temperature is proportional to mass to the power one quarter. So it is not very sensitive to mass. If there is a small 10% error in feeding the temperature, there will be 40% error in the mass. Okay. Uh, other way around, 10% here temperature, you can see that to the power 4. Okay. So it goes like, so the 10% error, the temperature to the power 4, it gets amplified. So if there is 10% error in mass, temperature, is amplified by to, to the power 4 to get the mass. So mass will never be coming very accurately in this process, in fact by any process, it is much better than other processes, but still we get the mass which, which matches with the other masses and of course uh, the error bar is also smaller, but we would have expected it to be much better, okay. This is a kind of fit that um, we were discussing, I should have shown uh, earlier this kind of fit. So this is a maxi data, you can see the fit with the cup, okay. And then this is the kind of uh, spectral evolution in two, three, three different days. And this is the feed with the cup. And uh, uh, we get the mass and the attrition rates, etc. This is probably the same object. Um, but it, 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 I think this is the new quantities which are there. This view power law, that is a separate feed. This is the total attrition rate. This is the attrition rate ratio. I have plotted, I did not mention this. And you can see the QPO frequency going up. Then there is sporadic QPO during the hard in soft intermediate. And then it goes down are intermediate and soft uh, hard state. So these QPOs and this is another object, you can see the same things happening every time. The shock location is getting smaller and smaller, okay. Shock strength is getting smaller and smaller. That is what you expect when the shock is coming closer and closer to the black hole, it's getting weaker and weaker. Because why? Because you are cooling it faster and faster, it's getting weaker and weaker, size gets smaller, it's, you know, vertical height gets smaller, so it, it reduces the number of interception goes down. Okay, so all these things have happened, you can feed them. This is the center of the disc, the center of the halo. Okay, this is, I already discussed about this 
x by p and how to calculate the for time etc and get the future frequency okay i already discussed okay this is a i think this is outburst this is our this is an outburst what is observed this is a spectrum this is our spectral fit by pick up so we fit uh, we fit all of them. there is no question that we there is no problem except that for soft states very soft states we don't fit because it does not have two components soft state only has one kepler component so tick tick up will not be useful if you can use a simple power law black body is good enough this is a maxi another object we fitted that we got the got the a you know the, the when you fit when we fit the data by tick up we get the exact physical value Accretion rate, location of this strong uh, sand ball, and size size of the bottom cloud. These are the physical things. But if you fit like power law black body, it is not a fit from a physical model. It only says that this has those two components and this has these slopes. And people make a big deal. No, 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 no. Slope was 1.7. No, I think it should be 1.8. But it does not matter what slope is. My question is, do you understand why that slope is there? Okay. So the general fit is black body plus power law will fit very well, but that is a generic thing that if you have any data, it has a power law component because it is a component cloud somewhere, and it will have a black body because there is a Keplerian disk somewhere. That does not so the fitting is not a problem. You fit something and fit something, not a problem. But at the slope also you will get something. Chi square will be very good, but it does not give you the, uh, the how many grams are actually falling. What is the mass of that black? Where is the same component cloud located? What is the density and the optical depth, etc. So, out of that, I will also show. I also mention to you one thing that uh, we fitted the loud the iron line. And this is very recent. I think last couple of couple of years we got published. And you can see that we require the iron line, which is the relativistically split. Okay, in a red shifted and the blue shifted, you add them up. Then only the pick up plus law, it fits very well. I think these are new stuff data, uh, this five data. So if, if that's there, if the iron one is there, then there should be a reflection component of the higher energies also. Uh, this, this reflection is already, see, if, is it more than this energy? Yeah. More than this energy? No, no, no. It, it should be in that energy. Yeah, but it fits. That means our, our pick up already has the reflection component. It's already in there. Yes. Okay. Now, I, so the only thing that's not in there is the iron abundance. Yes, so I know. No, no, yeah, I want to again the terminology part I, because you are um, more I mean, observer, instrumentation, and other things. But the point is that we don't really care the, uh, about the reflection component. The reason is it is in here. How do we calculate the spectrum? I think you go, go to talk about the Theta 95 paper. So we have this compound cloud, we have this disk, okay? And what we do is, I know the code, so I know exactly what I did. I chop it into small pieces. I chop this into small, very small, large number of pieces. Okay. I took the photons from here. I did, uh, I did the uh, study of electric electron temperature, optical depth, etc., and then let it radiate. Radiate. Part of it will go back. Okay. So I take them and absorb them, re-emit them, change the temperature of the piece, the R becomes P prime R after the first iteration. Then I take the T prime R, do the same combination again, it becomes T double prime Until and unless T double triple prime, T nth prime and n plus first prime is exactly the same. In other words, iteration has converged. So because of this iteration process is equivalent to you know reflection that you are pointing out. So what people say why they are so important in inflation? Why do they put their you know, stake into it? Because they thought it is a state power law, and suddenly they find it is not a power law. So they add a inflation component. And we never started with a power law. So we automatically get the spectrum with reflection in it. So that is why our spectrum, people say, why is your reflection component? We, we, even without deflection, how do you fit? So we have deflection, but in it, we did not separate them. You understand? So th this is one of the reasons why we require very few parameters. That is the only reason. So these are the iron lines we fitted. 
uh, you can see that there are very good uh, relativistic iron lines, generally relativistically also accurate, they are extremely close to the black hole. And uh, you can see, and they actually, they produce, um, I think the iron, uh, A was about 0.98 or something, that's what we, okay. So then we discussed already, I don't know if you have any question, that will be good, then we can start talking after the break, because we have some more slides. So, this is only slide number 57. This is nothing. I have hundred. See, yeah. so I, 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 I should have something left over for the next talk. Yeah. We have another 90 minutes for the rest. Uh, oh, I have some other stuff coming up. Any questions? Yes? I was wondering, the uh, uh, so it was a very cute for series. So, second thing is about for the nuclear oscillation frequency. I saw the if the shark, this laser stand, stationary shark. No, these are not stationary shocks, these are the oscillating shock. In fact, what? the shocks are oscillating and propagating. If the, if so they are going forward to the. Yeah, that, that, I will show you the next talk. You will see this nuclear thing. No, no, this is the one. What you are saying. It's precisely this what I have just done. Look at this picture. Yeah. Every day you see the QQ frequency is getting larger and larger and larger. So this is what is coming from the numerical simulation also. This is our simulation, hydrodynamic simulation. You can see that the QQ frequency is getting higher and higher and higher and becoming theta lip when you are increasing the accretion rate of the disk. Okay. Because if you increase the accretion rate of the disk, you are pulling it down, chain ball sinks. See, if you pull it down, it cannot support this much height. It, it, it has to slow, slow down, because you see, when does this shock forms, I told you already. T e plus rho is square. Remember, this should be continuous. If you pull it down, your thermal pressure in the post of region goes down. So that can only be attained again, only if you see. Okay. So you go on sinking, at the same time satisfy the resonance condition. So what can you do? It, it, it goes on doing faster and faster and faster and faster. That is precisely happens in the observation also I will show. You have, I have already shown you that observation QPO frequency started with the milliards and becoming 17 hertz in a matter of 10 days. This is how it starts oscillating slowly. Exactly the same process happens in active galaxies. But they may be taking one day to oscillate. Why? Because the time scale is still to be eight times larger. So what we are happening in 10 milliards what was happening 10 millihertz, 10 to the power minus 2 hertz, okay? It will be divided for 10 solar mass, it will be, you have to divide by 10 to the power 7 to make it 10 to the power 8 solar mass, okay? So you can see, like a micro hertz <coughs> level, that basically it takes a few days to oscillate, even few hours, if it's a 10 to the power 6 solar mass, one or two hours just to oscillate once. Identical, I never mentioned the mass of the, I mean, the science did not depend on the mass, right? Science dependent on the physics. So cooling, what cooling is important? Here it is quantum cooling important, there could be synchrotron important, so you have to use the cooling time scale corresponding to that mechanism. So when I say P sub C, I use quantum cooling time scale. If synchrotron is important, you have to use the synchrotron cooling time scale because there is a dominant time scale which will show whether it will oscillate or not. So everybody doesn't have to oscillate. It oscillates QPO forms. I have seen many hard states where the QPO doesn't form. I calculate the TC. It is either too small or too high compared to the infall time. It does not have QPO. So shock does not mean oscillation. But oscillation means shock. Okay. So maybe. Okay. Yeah, let's have a break and come back at 10.50. No, 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 you have to ask.